So back here for the start of the second half and Limerick making a change at left half back. Thurlow Kerbert's gone off, Ty Hayes has come on and of course it's Clare who lead by a point. Clare with a wind at their backs. Free to Limerick and straight away the referee drawing attention to the sideline. Uh, there's a Clare player, seems to be James e. O'Connor who's in need of some attention. It's going to be interesting, Jared, to see how Clare will play with the wind in this half. Limerick were, were just weren't able to play properly with the wind in the first half. And uh, will Clare stay out or will they stay inside waiting for the high balls to come in? There are times when, when teams play better against the wind than with it. The Clare medical officer is Dr. Pori Quinn. There's the substitute, Ty Hayes. He had been mentioned in dispatches leading up to this match that he might have replaced Mike Nash, who seemed to be uh, an injury worry much earlier on. Mike had a near infection, but contrary to some reports, he wasn't suffering from vertigo, I'm told. So a quick pause in proceedings here. James e. O'Connor, the school teacher from St. Flannan's, Jerry Lochnan, the team coach, also a school teacher. So care and attention then being given to the Clare number 12. Doors at one corner, the fans, a few gaps in the Clare following behind the goal at the Kilinen end. They haven't travelled in as huge numbers as before. That's disappointing with so many failures down the years, but James O'Connor anxious to make amends. He's back at midfield, marking Sean O'Neill. Dave Clark will be the free taker. So the Kilmallock man pucking into the breeze. First attack of the second half, which is broken up by Michael O'Halloran. Not forward. PJ O'Connell. O'Connell hitting a shot from some distance out, straight between the posts, and what a point! Well, he got one in the first half, but that was far better. A fine score by the O'Callaghan Mills player. And now Clare lead by 1 6 to 7 points, a lead of 2 points. This is just what, what Clare needed, a quick score in the second half. He knocked it away from Kieran Carey, did well from a good 50 metres out, straight between the posts. And Clare back in the attack once again. Stephen McNamara can't take it up, leaves it behind to Steve McDonough. The clear incident at the centre, no great long lengthy hitting this afternoon by players on either team really. Sean O'Neill and Frankie Carroll. Frankie didn't make much of an impression in the first half. Will need to up his performance, I feel, for the second 35 minutes. I'd be, I'd be a little bit worried if I were Limerick now. Gary's not playing well at centre forward. None of the forwards are playing well in opening it up. And uh, Kieran is not dominating the centre back position. The connection there by Dave Clark down towards TJ Ryan. Brought to ground by Frank Lowen. Going to be a free, of course, to Limerick. Gary Kirby will be the taker. Limerick's second free of the second half and just their seventh at all in this Guinness Monster Championship game. So two from four so far for Gary Kirby. And that's got off the post and over the bar. It looked like it was going left. But Gary's fourth point. All of his points coming from freeze. One from a 65. One point the margin. There's passion and commitment from followers and players all around the ground. A lot of nervous tension as well, however. Mike Coolahan under the dropping ball with Ollie Baker over there. Ty Hayes tried to make it his. In fact, Hayes, his first touch since coming on as a sub. Shawnee McMahon running straight into Mike Galligan. Ollie Baker trying to knock it forward. Ball ran kindly for him. Looking for another Clare score. This should be easy for Joe Quaid, and he decides at the end to let it go harmlessly wide. Clare's first wide of the second half, and their fourth in all. I, I must say, Ger, that the, the standard of hurling is very poor at the moment. There's, there's no clean striking, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of hooking, there's no open play. 
and there's, there's all individuals playing individual games rather than playing in team game. And it's not as if these players didn't have monster final experience. Clare's third time in a row in this showdown, of course, and Limerick's third time in four years. Sean O'Neill back towards Mike Houlihan. Pat Heffernan trying to get first run on this one, held back by Brian Lowen, free in. The Limerick following in particular, trying to get behind their team, trying to see them play the kind of flowing, dashing hurling they know they're capable of. And Clare's followers doing their best to make sure there isn't another disappointing end to yet another monster final. Gary Kirby will be the taker. Straight in front of the post. The ripple on his jersey indicating the strength of the breeze. And that's gone over the bar. The teams are level for the fifth time. For Limerick to win this game, the five or six players have to up their game, and for Clare to win, Clare have got to believe that they can do it. At times, Limerick look a bit lethargic. PJ O'Connell inside towards Connor Clancy. Mike Nash gave him a lot of latitude. Didn't get a good shot on it, however, Clancy. Joe Quaid coming out from his goal, looking to see where Stephen McNamara was. An effective clearance downfield towards Frankie Carroll. Didn't really get a good connection on it. And to boot it forward. Anthony Daly taking it away from him to Ollie Baker. Frankie gets a partial block on it. Sean O'Neill whips it forward towards TJ Ryan. Ryan trying to take it round the corner, trying to keep it away from Frank Lowen. The Wolf Tones player and Shannon brings him down. Not for the first time in the second half. And the referee signaling the free. Quick word to Frank Lowen saying, play fairly. Yes, if you see that again now, you'll see that he has pulled the jersey off him. Here we go again, TJ Ryan has the ball, out comes the hand, catches it, look, pulls it. That's the second time within, within one minute that he's done that. Running repairs for TJ Ryan. Should get away from Gary Kirby a little bit to allow him to have maximum concentration on this free. Yeah. <sighs> Dropped in low, David Fitzgerald has it, and he lost it and gives away the 65. Pat Heffernan was almost in for a possible score. I can't understand that TJ Ryan staying outside there tying his laces when he should have been inside around the square. That ball was an ideal ball for a right corner forward. And this is, this is, I don't know, there's something wrong with the attitude in some players that they're not geared and not fully motivated for this. Well, can it be the fact that they won handsomely last year? Yes. Of course, Clare lost to Tipperary the previous year by a big, big margin. That's possible, that's possible. That's come down off the post. Batted away by Frank Lowen. Here's Mike Galligan. Liam Doyle. Going left and taking away on his right-hand side. The supply of ball inside now for Gerald Lachlan, the sparrow. Wonderful hand pass to James O'Connor. There's a score here for the taking. And he puts it over the bar. Limerick looking sluggish at one end. Clare come down the field through the intervention of Liam Doyle and in the end James O'Connor pops it over after a wonderful hand pass and they lead by a point once again. Again, there's the situation. Michael Galligan had a chance to get the ball into his hand, misses it. Doyle clears and scores below at the other end. Clare, a great score for Clare at the other end. Three chances he's had, James O'Connor. Three points he's provided. It's an interesting move that has brought him into midfield for the second game in a row. Yeah, I think he's, that's, that's his position, really, James O'Connor's position in centre field. And I'm surprised when they play, placed him at left half forward. It's going to be a clear sideline ball. The decibel level rises another notch or two. Liam Doyle belted to midfield towards Ollie Baker. Can't contain it the first time. James O'Connor. Into space nicely. Declan Nash coming across the line here, the left corner back, making sure that he's not hooped by Connor Clancy. Dave Clark for Limerick. Limerick trailing by that solitary point. Anthony Daly doing well on the half back line to James O'Connor, racing away from Kieran Carey, who's not exerting his usual high influence in this match. Inside to Clancy, hand pass back to Stephen McNamara. Closed down initially, around it runs, and Joe Craig has to make a great save. Loses the stick, trying to get it away from the incoming Clare forwards. It's there for the taking, and the referee says, I'm going to throw it up on the 20-metre line. Oh, really?
real danger there and Joe Quay with a blow to the mouth and he's annoyed because the referee hasn't taken any action. But this is where the danger came from James O'Connor's ball yes, in here. in here. A good hand pass to Stephen, Steve McNamara. He's held off by McDonough. Corner forward is actually coming in. Joe Quaid makes a great save. Is held, drops the ball, and uh, the ball is thrown in there. I think that's the only thing the referee could have done in that situation. Gerald Lachlan, Declan Nash. Nash has it. Lovely pick up. Outside to Mike Houlihan. Houlihan has been an awful lot of hurling, as I said earlier, in the last 18 months, and I think he might be paying for that. That's downfield by Ty Hayes. Anthony Daly coming in there to rescue Clare from a potentially perilous situation, away from Mike Gallagher. And in there towards Fergal Hagerty. Lovely steal there, wonderful dispossession by Stephen McNamara against the other Steve, Steve McDonough. I feel, Jared, that uh, Clare are beginning to think that they, they have a chance of winning this game now. They're beginning to believe in themselves and they're coming forward and attacking. And the crowd are, are, realise this as well for Clare. They've never been this close before, even though there's a good 24 minutes to go. A long, long way. Steve McDonough comes back here again towards Stephen McNamara. Kieran Carey runs into the challenge there of James O'Connor. Secure holding there by Sean O'Neill. Backing back is O'Halloran. Michael O'Halloran for Clare. The six mile bridge player. Attracting three Limerick players to him. They're wanting a decision by the referee that he overheld. Didn't happen. Anthony Daly dispossessed momentarily by TJ Ryan. Out towards Gary Kirby. Back to Daly again. The referee's whistle sounds. It's going to be a three for Clare. And he's speaking to Sean O'Neill. Quick little lecture there to the Limerick number eight. I get the impression, um, Ger, that a number of the Limerick players seem to be tired. Uh, Gary Kirby seems to be tired now, and I think that's after his tremendous game against Tipperary. And there's nobody else giving him support. Frankie Carroll is not, not even in the game today. Yes, the greater freshness is coming from Anthony Daly's team, and they appreciate it up there in the terraces at the Kalinan end. Is the famine to end here? Shawnee McMahon from St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield on his own 65 metre line, whipping it high up into the air, dropping down in front of Connor Clancy. Mike Nash there, Clancy has it however, a little snapshot, and that's gone wide, appeals for a 65, that it went off the bat by Clancy, unheeded however by referee and umpire. And Clare may well be considering another change, on the sideline they're preparing one of their subs, Avon Taff, as this dropped in, wonderful catch there by Clancy, and watch once again as he had the little shot, did it come off a defender, the umpire said no. Good leap in the air here. Fergie Tui, the hand pass for P.G. O'Connell. Nobody going back to marking. A real lack of freshness by Limerick. And it's punished in emphatic fashion. O'Connell, it's third point. Clare are celebrating already. They lead by just two points. But Limerick gave up that time as O'Connell was going through, and in particular, Kieran Carey. Watch the number six, didn't give chase at all, nor the number 20 Ty Kays, and that was a relatively easy point. It's another free to Clare for a chop down in the middle of the field, the referee has a quick word with Mike Houlihan for that. Limerick are definitely in trouble now at this stage, Ger. Clare are beginning, their half-back line is beginning to dominate the Limerick half-forward line, and Limerick are not able to get the ball in. Quigley is out of the game, Galligan is out of the game, there's no ball going into Heffernan, so therefore Clare, Clare are cleaning up around here. And they can sense that they have a victory here. It's going to take something like a Limerick goal, I feel, to bring them right back into it and give them a sense of belief. McMahon with the free. Dropped in. a three-point lead. Switch. There's a switch there, Jared. Mike Hoolan's going to centre-back here on. Carey's going to centre-field. 
Well, they need to produce something to work some form of an article. That's McMahon, wholehearted now. Into the challenge there was Fergal Hartley as well, beaten by Sean O'Neill. O'Neill against Hartley, number eight against number eight. Trying to avoid the hook inside to Quigley. Lovely sidestep as it goes.